Hey guys, this is Jake over the Bioda Group, working with Reefs.com for 52 weeks of reefing. We're going to go the ins and outs of how to breed some popular fish and what kind of to look out for when you're starting. All right, we're, so we're starting out this video, uh, how to do a little bit of research on what fish to choose, how to choose them, and how to look for research within that breeding field. So if you know a little bit about saltwater breeding, you know that not a lot of species have been done relative to the amount of species that are in the hobby. It's a super diverse field. We have a ton of different gobies, blennies, damsels, and, and so many species within our hobby that have never been bred before. So you could be uh, an, a home scientist breeding something for the first time and, and really changing the hobby for the better. So one of the hardest decisions to make are what species you want to choose, whether it's uh, something that you're really attracted to, like a really cool species you always wanted to breed or one you wanted to have captive bred, you can do it yourself with a little bit of research. The two main things to really look out for is how they, these fish spawn. So some fish uh, will be demersal spawners, meaning that they spawn on a substrate, like uh, clownfish, gobies, blennies, or they'll be pelagic spawners, uh, where they'll kind of just broadcast spawn into the aquarium. The latter is a bit harder than uh, demersal spawners because when those eggs are spawned into the aquarium, they're usually a bit less developed, less parental care, and require that much more uh, input and on your end. So we usually recommend if you're gonna start breeding, start with a demersal spawner. Usually the easiest is a clownfish because it's so well documented. So for relative uh, skill level, you wanna choose something on the easier end, like I said, with clownfish and gobies and blennies because they'll be able to eat a larger prey size. So when you're breeding fish, you're gonna have to use live prey when they're just hatching. Um, a lot of the most popular ones are rotifers, some copepod nauplii and artemia are the main ones we use in the hobby. Many start with small size rotifers and copepod nauplii. Um, for many of these uh, easier demersal species, rotifers is the go-to feed. So with the spawning types of demersal and pelagic, uh, with the demersal ones, you can actually just take the eggs after uh, the fish has laid on a substrate. It depends on the species you're caring for, but with clownfish, it's usually like six to seven days after they've laid the eggs and they have the parental care where you can remove them and they'll usually uh, hatch about 24 hours later. With uh, other species like the pelagic spawners, you'll have to set up an egg collector, which can be a bit more intensive. There's a few different options for this. Uh, a really popular one for hobbyists is like the Vossen egg collector. Um, so that's with the fish hatch within the aquarium. They're attracted to light and they usually go right towards the egg collector. Um, we'll have some videos here to showcase that uh, method. Other options are uh, other in-tank egg collectors with like an upweller to collect some of the eggs right after they've uh, spawned in the aquarium or even um, after the overflow. You can modify the overflow for another egg collector to collect those eggs and move them to the hatching tank. All three options are super viable um, depending on the different hatch rate and species you're using. Some eggs will need to be a bit more gentle and some can take a bit more of a overflow. Um, to them. So when you're setting up your aquarium for uh, the process of breeding, you want it to be super minimal. Um, you don't want a ton of live rock in there or a ton of sand or other things. You'll see a lot of these breeders really, especially for clownfish, will have a pot or some PVC or some tiles um, just so that these fish can hatch on a substrate you can take out. If it's a, a big bit of rock work and they're laying on, on the underside, it's really hard to take out that entire chunk of rock work and replace it without uh, messing with their spawning cycles. Uh, as well as it's a lot easier to clean, right? Uh, one of the big aspects of breeding is making sure as much is sterilized as possible. So if you can swap out a pot with a, a bleached and cleaned one, then uh, you can kind of continue the process over and over and giving you the, the most trials and ability for success. And, and finally, with this video, we want to talk about how to choose good brood stock. Um, and this can be really important because there's a ton of different groupings of fish. Some are some pair off, some are in harem, some are in uh, different kind of groups like that, and you have to really do a bit of research on the specific species you're working with. Clownfish, they'll always usually spawn in pairs, but if you have some of these pelagic spawners, you'll have one male and a bunch of females, or one female and a bunch of males. So you'll do a little bit of research and you can pick out the right grouping for them. Uh, a lot of times what uh, is a little bit more time consuming, but I found to be a lot easier in the long run, is choosing a lot of juveniles. Um, when you have a lot of young fish, Many species within our hobby are hermaphroditic, so they'll change from male to female or female to male, depending on the dynamic. So if you choose a lot of juveniles, put them together, they will usually pair off on their own. Um, you'll see a little bit of aggression. You can move some to a different aquarium once that happens, but once they're paired up, 
And in those small groupings, even at a younger age, they're much, much easier to get spawning and, and really solidify that, that group. All right, this has been the, the first edition of our 52 week series on how to start breeding uh, with reefs.com. So keep an eye out for the next few videos. If you have any questions or if you want any more in-depth information about what we discussed in this video, definitely shoot out some comments and let us know.